and I got a question. Uh, uh, Connie, thank you for the help. And I will fix chat. So over here under the three dots, attendees can chat with anyone except for people who are not on this call. So cool. All right. Clock. Set my clock. And so the conversation today is about networking. And really, one of the things that it's important to remember as I set my timer for 45 minutes, start. Here's a couple of things. Well, I'm going to share with you a lot of ideas about networking. I'm not, I can't share all of it with you because there's so much to do. But I really want you to think this way. You're building a real Mutually beneficial network. You're not collecting business cards. So let's talk about that. You have to think of LinkedIn all about humans connecting with other humans. That's, that's the, the essence of networking is humans connecting with other humans. And, um, and let's share a little bit about how do you get there. All right, I got a bunch of tips here. And I'm going to share these tips. I probably don't have a whole bunch of uh, slides here because what I really want to get to is I really want to get to answering your questions. And so think about when you, uh, as you listen to what I share with you, go ahead and feel free to use the chat. Don't use the Q&A. Uh, you put it all in the chat because that way I can collect it all and, and share it with you uh, later on if need be. But ask me any question, please. Number one, don't send a LinkedIn invite to someone who's not actively on LinkedIn. If you look on LinkedIn, they have no activity under their activity tab. They ain't using LinkedIn. If, if you look and their activity is, you know, a year or two years past, don't waste time sending them an invite to connect because they're not going to see it and they're not going to respond to it. Unless you let them know up front that you send them an invite, then you might encourage them to go look at it. Don't send a LinkedIn invite to someone who doesn't know you or is not clear about your alignment or your relevance with them. Um, I, I, I use this phrase, don't use uh, the hope and pray tactic and send an invite and hope and pray they'll connect. That's not how you make this work. Um, so when we'll talk about other ways to do it. Really, when you send a LinkedIn invite, there's lots of different places you could send it from. Uh, you can send it from a company page and a people search and a company page. You can send it from uh, a search, uh, the search results. You can, you can hit the connect button there. I recommend you send your LinkedIn invites from the LinkedIn members profile. And the primary re reason I recommend that is so you can look at their profile and understand a little bit more about who they are before you send that invite. Every single invite, I don't care if that person is sitting right beside you, or if that person is Sylvia or Stacy or Lee or Denise or Connie or Carla or Bill or John or Steve or Karen or Tom or Ed, and it's in the same webinar with you, uh, you must always have a personal note. And that personal note needs to be just that personal, well-written, speaking to them, uh, not some generic, hey, we got mutual friends. Would you please join me on LinkedIn? Or, hey, I found you on LinkedIn and thought I would connect with you. Something meaningful, something relevant. Show them that you care enough to do a little bit of research before you send that invite. If the person doesn't know you, but yet you want to connect with them. Think this way. Go find somebody, if you can, whom you have a mutual connection with the, this person you want to connect with and ask them if they would introduce you to the person you want to connect with. I do this pretty regularly. If I want to connect with someone and I don't believe they know me, they've never met me, we've never talked, and they may not clearly see the relevance. And maybe they're not even on LinkedIn actively. I'm going to ask somebody I know to introduce me to that person before I send the invite. And I might actually engage with them via that email 
before I send the invite. It's much better. Again, I don't use hope and pray as a tactic. I use deliberate processes. And, and an introduction is way more powerful than any other way of getting introduced to someone. If, if they don't know you, if you don't have any mutual connections, then here's another thing you can do. You can go find their content on LinkedIn if they have, in fact, posted anything, not their comments, not their emoticons, and not the stuff they like, but their content that they shared. Consume it, which means look over it at least a little bit enough to where you understand what you're reading, and hopefully it's somewhat relevant to you. And then you can comment, especially if it's fairly new content. I wouldn't do this year with year, years old content, no more than a month old at the, at the most, but then you can comment on their post and that creates an opportunity for them to see you and know a little bit about who you are before they get that LinkedIn invite. I call this bumping into your target audience. And by the way, I'm going to go into LinkedIn and I'm going to, we're going to discuss all this and I'll show it to you in LinkedIn after we talk about these highlight, these, I call them my rules. You need to manage your LinkedIn invites and not only the ones that you get, but the ones that you send. And if you send invites out that haven't been accepted in a month, you should withdraw them. And the reason why you should withdraw them is because maybe you'll bump into them again. Maybe you'll have an opportunity for them to say hi to you or engage with you in some way. And then you can say to them, hey, Dylan, I'm on LinkedIn. I've, I'm going to look you up on LinkedIn. I'm going to send you an invite to connect. Now, if you have one pending, you can't send another. So you withdraw it so that, again, when the time is right, you can alert them and send them a new invite. It's not a race. It's a journey. Too often people get slap happy and they start sending out a bunch of invites with reckless abandon and they send out way too many and the algorithms may come back to you and go, uh-uh-uh, you're sending out too many. Of my, my opinion, 10 to 15 a day at most, at the very most, uh, the algorithms, uh, the system will allow for 100 to 200 a week. Uh, but if you're Monday through Friday, you, you you know, send out, you know, no more than 10 or 15. And that's a lot, by the way, especially if you're sending out invites purposefully. Please feel free to use the chat and ask me any question. I'll, be, I'll answer them either while we're talking here or when we go live in the LinkedIn. So, this is critical. I hope everybody is listening to what I say right now. Everybody is looking at the screen, looking at what I have written here. Every single connection you make, you must engage with them immediately. Do not just collect business cards. Be very purposeful about make a connection and find a way to get into a conversation with the person you connected with. Now, there's a lot to this because you may not engage with everybody the same way. What you want to do is you want to engage with your target audience, your ideal connection, your ideal client, that person who can help you grow your business or grow your career. You want to engage with them at a higher level than when you connect with that person that you met at a networking event who is not relevant to you. Yet, you still must engage with that person, just do it at a simpler level. I often say this. If you connect with your ideal client, your target audience, someone who's really important to you or you believe is important to your business or your career, you better, if you can find their phone number, you better pick up the cell phone and call them or use your office phone. I don't care. But too often people go, I can't call them. We just connected on LinkedIn. But that person, again, if you perceive them to be important to you, then you will need to take that conversation or that opportunity for a conversation to a whole nother level. And by the way, when you immediately engage, it ain't about you, Teddy. It's about them. Make that conversation about them and their business, their role, what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera, their company, until they give you permission to make it about you. And if you do this right, often they will give you permission. Here's another thing that's really important is you need to remember that this is about networking for mutual benefit. 
site, you should be looking for your ideal client. You should be looking for influencers who can introduce you to your ideal client or the hiring manager or the whatever it is your goal is for using LinkedIn. You focus on finding those people. But along the way, others may send you an invite to connect. So you should vet who they are. And if they are relevant to you in some way or another, or you're relevant to them in some way or another, accept that LinkedIn invite and be willing to get into a conversation with them. How big of a conversation? That's up to you. But you should absolutely remember, it's not just about you. It's also about you helping others. Here's a few bonus tips. If you think the invite uh, is not real, um, and if you're not real sure why you should connect with them, and I'll show you how to do this, you need to message them back and you need to ask them, who are you and what is it you want from me? And you'll use very polite words. But again, if you're not sure why they want to connect with you, ask. And I'll, again, I'll show you how to do this. It really, and I like that lady, a friend of mine, a lady said this, and, and I've been saying it for years. It's not about how many connections you have. It's about the relevance and the relationship that you create with those connections. If you're just trying to build a huge LinkedIn network and you're not creating a connection with them, if you're not developing a relationship with them, a mutually beneficial relationship, then it's not of any value to you. Often I will ask somebody to introduce me to another LinkedIn member. Oh, Teddy, I don't know any of my LinkedIn connections. And for me, that's just a shame. That's just a missed opportunity all the way around. So don't just worry about the, don't focus on the number, focus on the value of the connection and the relationship you can create. Here's another one from a, a client of mine, Greg. Don't ask for a purchase order or a sale. Don't ask for a job seconds after you connect with them. I get this all the time. People will send me a LinkedIn invite and, and they will try their best to like, hey, I'm not trying to sell you. I just want to connect. And then bam, they hit you with a pitch. You know, they hit you with a, you know, a phone call or, or a, you know, invite to a conversation to talk about their business. Don't do that. Be, be very transparent. It's about making a connection creating opportunities for conversations, seeing where those conversations go. And then my words, looking for an opportunity to invite them to a conversation to see if they would be interested in what you do. But that doesn't happen up front and often shouldn't happen before step two, three, or four. And if you're doing this right, you don't need to rush through, you know, find them, send them an invite, pitch them. If you're doing it right, You've got enough other conversations going on at different levels that may get you to where you need to go with each one of your connections. That's that's my that's my story. That's my very deliberate LinkedIn networking messages. So let's go into LinkedIn and let me share with you some things to think about um, so that you, you can get more value out of using LinkedIn. So a couple of things. And by the way, Drop in chat any question and I'll answer any question that you ask me. I really do need your questions to make this richer for you. By the way, there's a couple of things. If you're using LinkedIn search, I, I just say click in the search box and hit enter and then decide what you're going to look for. People, companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you click on people, now you got 898 million people on LinkedIn. Let me show you a spreadsheet that I just uh, did some work on. I've been tracking this since uh, 2018. 2018, there were 548,307, 770. And I could back then, I could get the actual digits. Now, LinkedIn has uh, narrowed it down to where you can only see the millions. But now we have 898 million people on LinkedIn. And um, this is equal B83. Uh, this is B83, you got to fix these. And so we're getting 688,000 new people every day on LinkedIn. This is a huge number. We're getting 7.96 million LinkedIn connections 
every, excuse me, 7.96 new LinkedIn members every second. Now that clearly tells me that there are a bunch of bots, a bunch of fake people. Don't worry about the fake people. There are lots of uh, opinions that there are 5%, 0.05, there are 5% of the LinkedIn members are in fact fake. And I'm okay with that. 44 million, out, oh my golly, out of 898 are fake. I don't know this exact number, but I don't care about those 45 million. What I care about is the balance. So it's a huge network of people What's important is for you to find the ones that are important to you. Um, but, you know, use a LinkedIn search, click in there, select people, and then use the filters. I mean, there's three filters across the top, connections, first level, second or third. And by the way, if you don't know what first, second or third is, drop in chat, tell me, and I will tell you. I'm going to assume that you know, but I, that's no harm foul if you don't know. But when you're searching for LinkedIn, I often say, focus on first level or focus on second and or third. But when you're looking, when you're searching on LinkedIn, don't look for all of this. Look for one or the other because it's a different conversation between first level and second level. So that's why you need to separate those two and do one or the other. You can do locations. You can go down to the region level. And so I can do, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, Greensboro, Winston-Salem High Point area. Or if I want to, I can select North Carolina, United States, India, or so I can go to city, region, uh, state, country, uh, and I can really, you know, filter it in lots of ways based on location. You can also look at the current company. Where do they currently work? And then if you go to all filters, you will see that there's connections, connections of somebody else that you're already connected to, followers of a LinkedIn creator. Those are interesting ones that may not be for everybody, but there's location. This is what they talk about. If they're a content creator, their current company, their past company, the school that they went to, uh, the industry that they're in, their profile language. You can use this, you know, they open to join a board of pro bono. I don't know that's going to be for a lot of people. But then you have these, what I call the, the ad hoc. So I can type in their first name or their last name. I can type in their title. I can type in their company or their school. And these are ad hoc fields. They don't need to be, if you go look up of here, school, this is a company, a school that's on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, but if I come down here under school, I can type in, you know, Teddy's Barbershop School. And, and, and the system will let me do that ad hoc words down here. And one other thing you can do that I didn't do is you can put words or groups of words up here. So I can say, look for manager, or I can look for department. Uh, I can look for lead, you know, maybe the, uh, et cetera, whatever. Or I can look for president. And I, all, I like to use the quotes. Uh, around it just so I keep it clean or I can say I look for vice president now those may be a haphazard president way of doing keywords but those are those are the ways this you can do it's called a boolean search you can put anything you want up here uh, as long as it's in that uh, format by the way a boolean search means and or and not and if you use an and or or not they have to be in uppercase otherwise they won't work I can put that in there, manager, lead, president, or vice president, there's 105 million. So, but you know, you the best way to learn this, I'm just throwing it to you high, high level. The best way to learn it is to practice. So go practice, play with it. And if you're not paying for LinkedIn, you're gonna run into what's called the commercial use limit, and it resets the first of every month. So now, don't get too stressed out if you hit the commercial use limit. If you get really serious about prospecting and looking for data on uh, people on LinkedIn, then you may end up wanting to pay for business premium or, or uh, sales navigator. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Connie said, uh, stay away. What advice can you provide me to find my other client to you serve them? Connie asked, I said, stay away from groups. Uh, is groups a part of, I don't know if groups, oh, no, groups is not one of the filters in LinkedIn. It is one of the filters in Sales Navigator. 
so I can look for people in groups. But Connie, there if you are in groups, I really just say they're of no big value. But if you are in groups, then you may want to go to the group. If, if you know there's a bunch of people in there who are relevant to you, and then you see where it says show all, I can click on show all and I can look for people, but I can only look by their name. So I can say look for Rob, and it's gonna show me all the Robs. Now, interestingly, Ro Kelly R, I wonder if her last name is Robinson or something like that, because there's a David Robinson, etc. So I can look for people in groups, but I can only look by their name. And what I recommend you do, if you, if you go to a group to look for members, then what I recommend, and by the way, I recommend this in any list, whether it's a LinkedIn search, whether it's a company ser uh, search or whatever, don't click on these names. Let me repeat, everybody listen to me. Do not click on these names. Right click and open in a new tab. That way my list stays right here and I can go over into that tab and I can work this record and decide, is this someone I want to know more about or not? So um, anyway, so yeah, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of, of using groups for activity, but they can be beneficial in finding people who are relevant to the topic that the group is about. Um, Connie, I'm going to hit your other questions. What advice can you provide me for finding my ideal client to engage and serve them? I'm looking for people starting or transitioning to the business analyst role. Um, so Connie, what you might, Connie's asking basically some ideas for finding and engaging so that she can then serve people who are transitioning to a business analyst role. Well, you might want to, an idea, uh, you might want to just do a search for business analysts and see if you can find those. I don't know how you would know who, what other roles may be looking to become business analysts. Well, that bombed out pretty hard, didn't it? Let me hit refresh. Sometimes you got to hit refresh to get the pill, get to work. Um, so look for people with bit. Whoa, does it not like the whoops? Let me do that one more time. Let me hit refresh. If I can't do this, it's a, just a simple snafu. Business analyst. Don't have to do it again. Now, often when it breaks, you just got to hit refresh. So, you know, if I hit people, there are 2.6 million people who have the phrase business analyst in their profile. Now, what I would tell you or recommend you do is drive it down, Connie and everybody else, drive it down to the smallest viable audience. And what I mean by that is, you know, maybe I want to look for second level, only second level. And second level, the value there is if I see somebody, and LinkedIn is really screwing up right now, if I see somebody who is second level to me, who is a business analyst, and it's just a LinkedIn must be doing something, changing something, because that's why it's breaking. So I, I, it's not that I can't do this. It's just that the app is spazzing out, and that's not unusual at all. Um, there's no way I can't find business analysts who are second level to me. That is so ridiculous. Uh, was there a space in front? Nope. So second level who have business analysts say uh, in their uh, in their, anywhere in their profile. This means anywhere in their profile. And now the value of second level is I can say, maybe I want to talk to Chris Wolf. Maybe I want to talk to Lauren. Maybe I want to engage with them. And if so, look here. I can go look and see our mutual connection. So I can call my buddy Don White, call my buddy Myla, call my buddy Bradley. Remember, I connect and engage, and maybe I can get one of them to introduce me to Lauren or Phyllis. So finding them, do a search. And uh, unfortunately, with LinkedIn, you can't search by keywords uh, or, or skill words, and you would have to have LinkedIn recruiter to do that, uh, but this is a, a one way of doing it and you can just practice and find other ways. Uh, so far my contacts are colleagues with experience. Yeah, the other thing you do too, Connie, is you know engage with your colleagues and ask them if they know anybody new. That could be that your colleagues would become an influencer who could introduce you to someone else. I get one more question. I'm going to go back to the conversation. Thank you for your assistance, but unfortunately, I'm not feeling well. Oh, I'm sorry, Stacy. Yes, we will send you the recording. So, all right, a couple more things to share with you. 
So if you get invites from people and you don't know who they are, okay, I got an invite from some dude named Jacob. Hey, Teddy, would love to connect. Well, that doesn't tell me a thing. So I don't know whether I should connect with him or not. First of all, I do not manage my LinkedIn invites from here. Everybody needs to have eyes on screen. See all 30. I manage my invites from here. Every time I come to this page, I click on that and I can manage my invites here. Now, why do I do that? First of all, I can right click on his name, open it in a new tab, right click on this guy, open him in a new tab. These are all my new invites. I've already dealt with that one. And then I go look at this guy and I can leave my list right there. Go look at this guy and then make a decision. Who is he? He's in Tennessee, works for a company called Lead Strategy. That tells me, he, I think that business is all about helping people find leads. And I know that's what he wants. He wants to pitch me. I'm quite certain of it. Helping coaches scale while avoiding burnout and quality. That tells me that he's a lead generation guy. It's what he wants to do. If I go look at it, he's been doing this for a year and a piece. And so um, for me, I'm not likely to hit that accept button. Here's what I'm going to do. Watch this. I'm going to go back to him. I'm going to close that down because I'm not going to accept his invite yet. I'm going to go back to my list and I'm going to reply. Look what I'm going to send to him. And I use a tool called Text Expander. So it types this in for me. I just said, hey, dude, how you doing? Thanks for the invite. How did you find me? I love to help people master using LinkedIn. What can I do to help you? I need you to reply. Now, I didn't say those blunt words, but that's what this is saying. And so I want to hit send. He has one week to respond to that message. If he responds to that message in some appropriate way, then I'll hit the accept button and then I will engage with him further. If he doesn't respond in appropriate way, such as he may say, hey, Teddy, I help coaches scale their business, then I'm going to respond back to him that I don't want to connect. And I'm going to use, I'm not going to say that blunt words. What I'm going to say is thank you very much for the invite. Please follow me on LinkedIn, Quora, YouTube, and my company page. And, I, and again, I'm going to tell you, Connie, what that tool is. <clears throat> I have a tool that does this. I'm not going to send it to him. Uh, and it's called my follow button. And look what it says. It says, please follow me on Quora, my company page, my YouTube channel. Look at my courses on Teachable. I hope you enjoy what I share. I'm basically saying no without saying no, which by the way is a powerful business process. Uh, don't say no, just say something different. Connie, the tool that I'm referring to, I will send it in chat to everyone, is called Text Expander. And it might be textexpander.com. Let me put it HTTP colon slash slash www. See if that gets it to you textexpander.com. Uh, I, I might be paying a hundred bucks a year for it, but I'm telling you it's worth it because there's so many things I type over and over and over again that I don't need to type. I just use a little short three character code. So anyway, if you get invites from people, go vet them. Let me repeat, vet the invite before you accept the invitation. You want to know who they are and you want to know why they want to connect before you connect. This guy here is also, I think he's also, uh, you know, an SDR and he's, you know, he's a lead generation guy. I don't think he's the right guy for me to connect with. So I'm going to go back and do the same thing for him. I'm going to hit message. I'm going to do my semicolon W H Y L I M A N O J. And I'm going to send that to him and expect him to respond. Now, just because you're seeing it, let's see what did Jacob say? Oh my God. Jacob is absolutely using automation or uh, he's got a copy and paste script because he is no way he typed all that in that short period of time. I'm not going to bore you with reading that. So I'll just leave that marked as unread and come back to it another time. Do not connect until you vet. It's the best way uh, to, net, to connect on LinkedIn. Now, one more thing. Every time you connect on LinkedIn, now, by the way, I have a huge LinkedIn network. I've engaged with almost every single person I've connected with. I started doing this in 2007. 
Now, I will tell you, in the early days, I didn't do a good job of it, but I've gotten way better. Every time you accept an invitation or someone accepts your invitation, you need to immediately engage with them. Now, one of the th things to do, let me bring up a profile that I know I can share with you, uh, his contact information. The guy's name is uh, my, my business partner in another business, Randy Wooden. And so if I, when I accept the invitation from Randy, I need to engage with him. Do not hit accept and walk away. Now, if they're highly relevant to you, you want to call them. If you don't have a phone number, you have a business email address, email them. If you don't have either one of them, then you might want to send a video message. And from your mobile phone, you can send a video or audio message. Um, so if they're highly relevant to you, I encourage you to engage with them at a higher level than you would engage with anybody else. Now, if they're not highly relevant to you, at the very least, send them a message back and thank them for the LinkedIn connection and let them know if there's anything you could ever do to help them for them to please contact you. Networking for mutual benefit. It's not just about you making a big LinkedIn connection. So any questions, drop them in chat and I'll answer them for you. I don't think there's any Q&A good. Um, so um, here's another really cool tactic I can show you. Let's go to this company called IBM and maybe you've heard of it and they're not relevant to me, but you know, I want to show you from a big list, 309,393 employees. But look at this. This is pretty cool. All eyes on screen. Look what happens when I click on people. It brings up this box down below. And it brings up people you may know below that. Now, when I go back up here to the to this box here, I can type in, you know, tr uh, trainer. I don't need a quote. I can type in trainer. There are 2,223 people uh, that work at LinkedIn who have the word trainer in their profile somewhere. Then I can come down here and, 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 and by the way, right here it is. All of these people you may know are the people who have the word trainer in their profile. Now, I can go better than that. I can say I only want the 596 who are in the U.S. 596 in the U.S. with trainer. That's these people down here. Even better than that, I can come over here and what do they do? Business development, hit show more. I can scroll through this list. And unfortunately, there's no there's no ad here like there is here. I can add skills, but I can't add here, which really confuses me. Um, oh, let's see what I do. I hit education. I didn't want education. Come back. I want, so there's no ad button, but there is an ad for the skills they have. And then there's over here next, I have what they studied and I have skills there and how am I connected? So do I have a first, second or third level? Let's do first level. I think I'd have a few. Two employees that I am first level with in the United States that are have the word trainer in their profile who work for IBM. So I didn't want to get rid of that. I want to put trainer back. And then I'll show you again, below this, I'm on the company page under the people tab. Below this, here's the two people who are trainers who work at LinkedIn that I'm connected with. First level means we're connected. Another really powerful way to do search on LinkedIn to find the people you want to find. In this context, I'm right on the company page and I'm using the people tab to do this searching. And I can adjust the criteria any way I want. Actually, check it out. First level, I have 22 people I know that work at IBM. Oh, I know Logan and Tricia and Chad. Questions? Drop them in the chat and I will answer them for you. Um, let me go back to my notes. And what am I missing? Give me one second. Uh, boom. Here. Um, uh, engage, manage, vetting a member, search. 
So let's talk a little bit about that, um, uh, managing your LinkedIn invites again. I said this earlier. So I go to my network and then I go to see all 30. So here's all the invites I've gotten, okay? They're all people invites. There's no newsletters or company pages or whatever. There's other things you can get invited for on LinkedIn. But if you see it here, here's the sent. Look here. These are all the invites that I have sent out. And so, again, I recommend if they're more than a month old, and I'm sure I have someone here that are more than a month old, then I recommend you come down here. Do it in the middle of the screen. You'll see why I suggest that. Because if I hit withdraw, I have to hit withdraw. And look at the bottom. I have to hit this X, but I'm not going to hit it yet. So I hit withdraw, withdraw. I don't need to move my cursor so far. Withdraw, 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 withdraw. These are all too old. Nope, they haven't accepted. So they're not looking at LinkedIn. And so they haven't even hit the ignore button. They're just all pending. So I'm withdrawing all of those. And once I've withdrawn all of them with those double clicks, I can come down here and go boom, 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 and get rid of them. So don't let these stack up. I still have a bunch I need to get rid of. Uh, so Connie asks, where do I see the scent? I'm going to repeat this whole process. Watch this, Connie. Go to my network. Go to see all 30. And then you'll see received and sent. Click on sent, and there it is. These are all the, I sent out 58 page invites. I sent out, I got eight, uh, you know, look, it only shows four, eight invites to go to events. Then I don't want those either. So I would draw all those. No need to let them all climb, stack up either. So, uh, but anyway, manage your people invites and don't let them stack up. So um, let's see what other I want to share with you. When you said, uh, I said, when you send an invite, you absolutely want to always send an invite. Let me see if, uh, uh, let me see. Somebody, would some, one of you uh, type the name of the company you work for if you let me use your LinkedIn profile for a test? Somebody just type the name of your company. I'll see your name. And I need to know the name of your company so I can find you. And I'm going to use your profile as a test if you would be so kind. as the words I'm supposed to use. And I appreciate it. 8,000 people on the call and Connie says she's the exact science, exact sciences. So watch this. I type in Connie. I don't need uppercase C O T T T E R. And then watch this exact. See what it just did. If I do it, just left it at Connie and hit enter. There's, you know, go to people. So I, I now I'm driving it. There's 14 Connie Cotters. I, I, I don't know which one it is. But if you stay up here and you type in Connie Cotter, exact, then I can click on her name. And then I can bring her profile up without going into the whole search thing. And there's Connie with her smile. Now, I don't I don't know Connie, other than the fact she's on this call. But look here. I can see she's second level. She knows a dude named Alan Helms. Alan Helms, I'm pretty sure he's hired me to do work for him at a, um, at an association he's a part of. So I could call Alan Helms and say, hey, hey, Alan, how well do you know Connie? And hopefully Connie knows Alan and vice versa. And then I can ask Alan the next question. Do you think Connie is someone I should connect with? If I'm trying to connect with her, this is the steps that I would use. Now, if Alan doesn't know her well, then I'm going to come down here and see her activity. Look, three weeks ago, she posted something. Click on see all activity. Click on post. And she reposted something from Richard DePilla. Now, interesting enough, I know Richard DePilla. Why am I not connected to him? Oh, I've seen this before. And so I could come down here. Now, here's a problem. Connie reposted this. So when I comment, the comment's not going to go to Connie. It's going to go to Richard. Let me repeat. Because Connie reposted this, my comment's going to go to Richard, not Connie. So I may go down here and find some other content. Here's what I thought of my most recent LinkedIn learning course. So this is Connie's post that's three months old. Now I may come down. What was the course she took? Design your first logo. Now I can come down here and comment. Uh, Connie. I wish I had taken 
that course myself 14 years ago. Have a great day and post. So I just commented, Connie, and if she has her LinkedIn fired up, right here under notifications, she just got a boom, a number just popped up. And um, and then she uh, would see that Teddy Burris commented on her stuff, and now she knows who I am. So now I can go back to her profile, and I can hit, I can either hit the connect button here, but if it's not there, it's going to be here, okay? I can hit the connect button, hit add a note, and I can say, hi, Connie. Now, I do this very deliberately if I meet it at an event or something. Good to meet you at the SELU uh, webinar with Karen and the group. And then I say, please join me on LinkedIn. Look, I didn't type, please join me. I hit semicolon PL and Teddy fixed the grammar, fixed the spelling. That's why I have uh, this thing here, uh, what's it called, Grammarly, and then send. And I would not have sent that to Connie if I hadn't have first engaged with her and she knows who I am now. So anyway, I just want to share that with you. And once, Con once Connie accepts, I'm going to get a number up here. It's going to show up a one. It's going to show up the one. And then I'm going to know Connie accepted my invite. Now, if I refresh this, I might also see it if Connie's quick on the draw and she doesn't need to be. Now, see the green dot? Everybody eyes on screen. See that green dot? That tells me Connie is looking at LinkedIn in a web browser right now. You didn't know that, did you, Connie? She is looking at a, at a web browser. Now, that's telling me she's probably clicking on accept. I'll get a, a number here. It'll pop up, but I'm not going to wait for it. If I hit refresh, then I may see. I know it's happening. I know it's happening because the one hasn't popped up. Let me hit it again because the two's gone. And I just saw at the bottom a note that popped up. And now I'm first level with Connie. Now, probably if I would have been patient, it would have showed up here and said, Connie accepted my invite. But, um, and, you know, so great to connect with you. She responded back. Now I need to come back and engage with her because the worst thing I can do is connect and not engage. And so Connie expect me to do that. By the way, look how I do this. Mark is unread and I'll come back to it later. I'll get to this guy later as well. But anyway, the process is easy. Don't rush it. Uh, and you know, you get, you will get better at the process the more you practice. I, I can whip through this pretty quickly because I practice and practice. And I promise you, it will not be drudgery if you practice doing it. Anybody else have any other questions? I'm, I'm not done, but I want to make sure I'm answering your questions. Uh, so Dylan, Jody, Bill, Scott, Steve, Larry, uh, Lynetta. Stacy, Connie, Carla, um, Karen's looking at me like, what is he doing? Uh, anybody have a question, feel free to ask. Karen, it's hard to get through 9,000 names, let me tell you. So um, a couple other things about networking on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm building your network. By the way, something I may not have showed you last time, if you want to develop your relationships with the people you connect with, pay attention to the notifications. What did Ray Mitchell say to Kevin? I haven't talked to Ray in a while. I should say hi to him. Also, look here. Uh, I can look at uh, people engaging on my post. You know, did, did you know Shannon said something? I get old. I got so I should come back and engage with Shannon. Uh, and maybe Shannon's a connection of mine. Maybe not. Let me see if Shannon's a connection. No, Shannon is second level. But who is this Shannon person engaging on my content that I posted? Oh, this, this was a funny post. Uh, you know, maybe I need to engage with Kevin. Kevin's a buddy. Maybe I look at him playing with Teddy. You know, maybe I need to engage with Shannon. And, and you read what they say and you engage with them. And this is how you develop your relationship, not just by simply connecting. This series has been amazing. Connie, thank you very much. I studied and studied to be able to do this. Going to go back and, and rewatch. Oh my golly, Karen, she's a glutton for Teddy punishment. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. Tune in a little late, but it's a very helpful. We'll watch the recording. Uh, many thanks. How much time per day do you spend on LinkedIn? Connie, you sound like my wife. How much time are you going to spend on LinkedIn today, Teddy? And I'm joking, but she does ask that question regularly. So I teach LinkedIn. 
So I'm on it all day long. If you own a business, run a business, you're a business developer, you're an operations person, what I recommend you do is experiment with using LinkedIn and find ways to integrate the use of LinkedIn into your business processes. Listen to that statement. Find ways to integrate it into what you're doing. So while you're getting emails, you're you know looking at you know other people, you're talking to a client, you're talking to a prospect, you want LinkedIn open. I never log out of LinkedIn on any of my devices, ever. I leave it run all day long. And the reason being is because I can hop from one app to another and I can say, oh, I need to go look at this on LinkedIn and go to LinkedIn. So the worst thing you can do is log out of LinkedIn because when you log out, it takes time to log back in and it becomes more drudgery and do not create processes that are drudgery. I need to save this picture. Look at that. Bam. <laughs> um, what other questions? And Jody, you're right. When you figure out how to integrate it into your business process, it becomes a benefit to your business when you're using it right for the right purposes. So I, I don't, well, I'm going to go back through my notes and make sure I didn't miss anything. <clears throat> um, again, if you use LinkedIn search too much and you're not paying for LinkedIn, you're going to hit the commercial use limit and LinkedIn is going to minimize your search results predominantly in the people search, not the other areas. And you will only get, look at this, LinkedIn is totally broke right. That tells me they're changing stuff. Uh, hey, there's Colleen. Uh, so if you're, if you're using search a lot in people, don't break, don't break. And you do it over and over again then this, this, the application is going to shut you down. It's called hitting the commercial use limit. And then uh, you'll only see the last three results. No matter what you're searching for, you'll only see three. Be patient. Don't jump at paying for LinkedIn yet uh, because the first of the month, it'll refresh and you'll start using up your commercial use limit again. So, um. I'm trying to think of there's anything else that I should have said. You know, remember it's networking for mutual benefit. It's not all about you. Difference between contact and connection. Kind of, it's a great question. <clears throat> it's up here. My network connections and contacts. The only reason contacts is still there is because and it's an antiquated process. LinkedIn's, pretty much screwed it up. Uh, it doesn't even work anymore. Because when you go to contacts, now you, I won't do it. I, I won't do it. Uh, I won't do it. I actually, I, I could do it to do the testing. So I'd have to do it on another platform. I'm not going to do it on this platform. I don't think it even works when you sync your contacts because I've tried it. And um, it used to be that you could, sync it to Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, or AOL. I've tried it and it doesn't work. Yet, there are still people who have contacts and they, so that's why it's still there. It used to be that you would import your contacts, then you would go through your contacts and you would look for people in your Google contacts, Outlook contacts, et cetera, et cetera. And you would look for ones that you want to send an invite to. Um, so Connie says, if we have 389, are those people my connections? Or Connie, I think if you're looking at, if you see that you have 389 connections, no, you have 766. So if you're looking at my network and you see connections, these are people that you've connected with. Contacts, those are people that you have imported their name, maybe their company and their email address, but you can't import them anymore. Um, I, I would encourage you to look at it. If it's of no value, I would encourage you to get rid of it. Um, so, but, you know, look at and see, maybe you can look at those contacts and some of them you should send them an invite to connect. And I think you do that through a contact screen. I can't demonstrate it because I can't import any. So I hope that makes sense, Connie. So, yeah. So, 
Anyone else, any other questions that I can help you with with building your LinkedIn network? Any other questions I can answer for you? Again, while I'm waiting, please jump in here and ask me questions. Let me tell you about my business card process. <clears throat> when I go somewhere and I get business cards, and I recently went to Vegas and got business cards uh, from a conference, here's my business card process. They do not go in a drawer. They do not get left on my desk and ignored. What I do is I look, I first put all of these connections, all these business card contacts in my Google contacts. So here's my Google contacts. They all go in here. I got 5,000 people in here. That's the first thing I do is I add them to my contacts. The second thing I do is I send them an email and say hello. And I engage with them in some way relevant to how I met them. After I put them in my contacts, maybe put them in my business contacts, but at least put them in my personal contacts because they are humans that I have met. Then I look for them on LinkedIn. And then I send them an invitation to connect on LinkedIn. And I, in my invite, I remind them and myself that we met at that conference. So that, because as you get older, you're going to forget where you met people. And it makes it really easy for you to go back to that message when you're talking with them. And you can just like I did with Connie, and I can say, Oh, I met her at the SELU event. Okay. On it'll say the date, it'll, it'll say today's date when a date changes. Put them in your contacts. Maybe put them in your business contacts. Send them an email, say hello, look for them on LinkedIn. Send them an invite to connect and remind them where you met. So oh, that's my business card process. How do you start a conversation? Carol Lett, and I hope I'm pronouncing Carol Lett's name right. How do we start a conversation? And you would think I know the answer to that, huh, Karen? <laughs> this is how you do it. You, if I go look for this lady named Carol at C A R O L E T T E W R I G H T, and I find her, and I know how to find her because uh, I go to people and I find her. I think she's in Tennessee. I think this is her. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, and let me know if it is Carol Ann. I apologize for not pronouncing her name right. So, how would I start a conversation with her? Well, if I know I met her at an event, then my my message to her might be, Carolette, really enjoyed meeting you and sharing at the event. I uh, had a great time there. I can be relevant if we've met in some way or another. Well, maybe we haven't met in some way or another. Well, then I see that we have 10 connect, shared mutual connections, okay? And so do you, does she know Faye? I hope she knows Faye because Faye's a cool lady. Does she know Cheryl? Cheryl's good people. Does she know Lynn? Lynn's good people. I hope she knows some of these people. And even John, as grumpy as he can be some days, and I'm being joking here, you know, maybe she absolutely knows some of these people. So my conversation, if I want to start a conversation with her, could be Carolette. I notice you're connected to, Ke to John and Kevin. They are really good people. I hope you've had a chance to talk with them. That is starting a conversation. Now, she may come back and say, no, Teddy, I've never met them. And that's not unusual, but I'm trying to start a conversation in a meaningful way. By the way, I would never send a message to Carolette and say, hey, Carolette, I see we have 10 mutual connections. We should connect. That's ridiculous. That's like saying, Carolette, we both breathe air. We should connect. That's ridiculous. Now, another way I could start a, con a conversation, I could look at her content. And I can see what she shared. I can see what she posted. She posted this inner voice that guides is powerful. Okay. So she's posting this and I'm going to, I might listen to it. And I probably have already heard it. I might look at something that she posted and I had four drivers in my trucking business. And here are the main rules I give them. Look, read what she shared. Creates an opportunity for me to come back to her profile Send her an invite to connect and start a conversation. Carolette, does that make any sense? So do it transparently. Do it meaningfully. Don't do it in some vague, you know, opaque way. And maybe you can't start a conversation with her. Then if I can't, you know, but I want to connect with her, I'm going to ask one of my peeps to introduce me to her.
Carolyn, I hope that makes sense. So, you know, it's a lot of stuff. And uh, at the end of the day, thank you, Carolyn. For me, it's all about, you know, make a meaningful connection with the right people. Uh, focus on the right people. Be willing to accept advice from people who are who you could help as well. And I had that above my head to remind me more so than remind you that it's all about starting a conversation. And if you can find a way to start a meaningful and relevant conversation, that works. Karen, back to you. Thank you so much. That was great.